Hello everyone. Welcome to the tutorial of combustion modeling in Fluent in which I am using Ansys Fluent 2019. In this tutorial, I will model a combustion chamber with non-premixed combustion of methane following K epsilon viscous flow model. The combustion chamber is of diameter 700 mm and length 2000 mm. Here in the left face, there is an extrude cut of 150 mm and its inner diameter is 600 mm. There is a primary air inlet, 6 fuel injectors and 4 air injectors for secondary inlet of air. Also, there is a pressure outlet at the downstream. So, the fuel injectors are of 20 mm diameter, which is angular spaced evenly. The vertical distance from the center of the tube is 200 mm. So, in the design modeler, I will be using the pattern of count 6 in the angular direction. For air injectors, which are for secondary air inlet, there are 4 injectors of 35 millimeter diameter and the vertical distance is 100 millimeter. They are also angularly spaced evenly, so making 90 degrees. So in the workbench model, I will drag this geometry in the project schematics and open a new design modeler geometry. So in the design modeler, I will be selecting XY plane and sketching a circle from its center but first of all I have to select the coordinates units which are in millimeter so now I can draw easily from the origin of the coordinate system draw a circle select its dimensions with a semi-automatic command so if there is any variation in the vertex I can adjust the coordinates so its diameter is 700 millimeter. Now I have to use this extrude command to set the length. So I will add material to form a solid shape. But remember that we are not using solid influent. In order to make the geometry we have to select solid first and assume it as our fluid domain. So the depth which is the length is 2000 meters. So generate, we will get the solid body of our combustion chamber. Now we have to change the coordinates. So we'll select a new plane, transform it to offset Z with 2000 millimeter distance. Generate. Now we can extrude cut this solid body. Again, form a circle with the dimension 600 millimeter diameter then extrude cut material 150 millimeter direction reversed there we will get our can combustor geometry. Now we have to form the injector on this face. In order to do that, we have to transform the plane again. Transform offset Z. Now it is in the opposite direction, 150 millimeter. Generate. So again, select a circle, and with the dimension, semi-automatic, because now we have vertical distance as well. So the diameter for the fuel injector is 20 millimeter, and the vertical height 
is 200 millimeter extrude 50 millimeters with add frozen because it is the extra part other than the fluid domain so generate now we have to select the pattern for this injector in the angular direction circular pattern type we have to select this face actually the whole body and the axis which is the face normal to this injector and make the copies now again a new sketch for the air inlets. Repeat the process. Circle. Dimensions. Now the dimension of this air injector is 35 millimeter and the vertical distance is 100 millimeter. Repeat the process to extrude this edge, but remember we don't have to add the material. Instead, add frozen to make different solid bodies. This is also 50 millimeter in length, so we can generate this. Now again, select pattern. this geometry now it has three copies normal to this face so we have built our can combustion chamber but these injectors do not have the imprint on this combustion chamber so we have to use the boolean command in order to make the imprints on this face so select boolean imprint faces and the target body is the whole solid tool bodies we have to select these injectors but we have to repeat the whole process after doing this so we can do that first we can select the injectors add frozen generate So the geometry is completed 
Now we have to name the faces to set the boundary condition. So our faces, this one is the primary air inlet. These faces as our fuel injectors This one our outlet these faces as secondary air. That's all for the geometry. So, after completing the design modeler, I will mesh the geometry. So I will insert the method first, select the geometry and use multi-zone with hexa meshing. And then select body sizing of the injectors. With the element size one exponent minus three meters set physics preference to CFD fluent and element size of one exponent minus three actually not 1 exponent minus 3, set it to 1 exponent minus 2. Since the mesh will be very fine and I don't have much computational power. So, generate the mesh. So the meshing is done, a very fine mesh can be seen on the injector body. Now we can process this mesh. Now dragging the fluent So this tool is used for processing of the discretized model. So in the setup, we can define our model. There are four models we define. First, the energy equation, then the turbulence model, and also there is radiation effect because of the high temperature and the species transport model.
So initially I will set up a steady model. So first turn on the energy equation. Then for the turbulence flow in the combustion chamber, select K epsilon. Also, the temperature is around 2000 degrees centigrade and above. I will select the even model. And for the species, I will select non premixed combustion. with methane as a fuel, but keep in mind select mass fraction, the mole fraction will give an error because the calculations are different for mole fraction and we have to generate a probability density function table. This PDF table contains the required mean mixture fractions of each species that is involved in this combustion. So now we have to set the boundary condition. There are many boundaries enlisted here, but we have to select fuel injectors, primary air, secondary air for our mass flow inlet condition. The outlet is selected automatically for the pressure outlet. So for the fuel injectors, we have to select the type as mass flow inlet. and provide the mass flow rate. So I have to calculate the mass flow rate for the fuel injectors, the air injectors and the primary air inlet. So the mass flow rate I have assumed the power of 35 kilowatt with the heating value of methane 50 exponent 6 joules per kilogram by using this formula of dividing power by lower heating value I can calculate this mass flow rate of fuel which is found to be 7 exponent minus 4 kilogram per second. So dividing it by the number of fuel injectors I will get the mass flow rate of individual fuel injector which is 1.1667 exponent minus 4 and by taking 5.5 percent fuel of the total mass if I divide it by the total mass flow rate I can get the rest of the air incoming so the total air mass flow is found to be 127 exponent minus 10 kilogram per second. So if I consider 75% of air is coming from the primary inlet, I can multiply it with the total mass flow rate of air, which is 95.45 exponent minus 4 kilogram per second. Whereas for the secondary air, I have to divide the number of air injectors and multiply it by the rest of the percentage of the air incoming. So 25% of the air is going in from the air injectors. So it is found to be 7.9545 exponent minus 4 kilogram per second. So for the fuel injectors, I will set the direction normal boundary and mass flow rate of 1.1 667 exponent minus 4, turbulent intensity of 10 and the species mean mixture fraction of 1. The thermal condition is 300 Kelvin total temperature and the radiation emissivity is set to 1. So okay. Now for the primary air, condition in mass flow inlet. So direction normal to boundary, 
फोर फाइव एक्स प्लेन माइनस फोर डबल इंटेंसिटी ऑफ टेन एंड स्पेशी मीन मिक्स फ्रैक्शन टू जीरो सो लास्ट सेकेंडरी एयर मास फ्लो इनलेट Direction normal to boundary, doubling intensity set to ten percent, and mass flow rate seven point nine five four five exponent minus four. So the boundary condition is set. And for the balls, I've selected adiabatic balls. Where there is no heat flux, for the solution methods, I have kept it default. Also, the solution controls relaxation factors are also set to default. However, if the solution is not converging, I can change the relaxation factor as per the requirement. So, starting the hybrid initialization, the first ten iterations are done. Now we can run the solution. And I will set three hundred iterations. Now it will take a while. So I have to do the meshing again, since my computational power is not that much. So I set the element size to two centimeter, and Body sizing of these injectors to five millimeter. So mesh is not that fine, but it's okay. I can run my setup now. So update. Now let's see if the fluid solver can run this discretization, or if not, then I have to increase the element size. So hybrid initialization is done. Now I can run the calculations for 300 iteration. Fill time per iteration is too large, but that's okay. So I will pause the recording here and let the solution run the setup. So we can see that the residuals that are predefined to one exponent minus six, so the solution is quite converging, except the p one, which is for the radiation. But that's okay. For the radiation part, there could be some error. But for the rest of the residuals for the species and turbulence and for the energy equation, this seems really good. Okay, now we can check the results for contours of temperature. 
you can select the plane. Here we can see that combustion is happening after the fuel injection. You can also check contours of species for methane, mass fraction contours can be seen for the methane, where this area shows high mass fraction and the mass fraction dissipates afterwards. Mixing with Oxygen, and we can also check the mass fraction contours of O2. Here, the primary air is coming from this section, secondary air can be seen here, and then the mixing happens and the mass fraction is declining. Also, we can check the mass fraction of OH. So the mass fraction of OH is very good for indicating the combustion where flames can be predicted. So that's all for now. Thank you for listening.